So when we count, <clears throat> what we're doing is we're taking a representation of some number of things and we indicate that by, uh, well, various different ways. So probably the most fundamental way is using, let's say, well, let me grab my right color here. We, uh, we, we indicate, for instance, like with a, let's say that's a stick. So we have one stick and we represent that with one. And we have two sticks and we have three sticks. So I do three like that. Three, four, that's four sticks. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what I'm doing here is I'm just counting. And uh, obviously I skipped a few here, but you can tell that after a while this really gets kind of tedious. So what we've done is we've, um, as humans, we've designed a different way to count. So what we do is we kind of align our numbers, well, actually they're called numerals, and we align those in columns. So for instance, um, let's say we have the number one, which happens to kind of look like stick, and it represents one item. So we have a numeral two, and that in, it, it indicates two items, and we have another number, uh, numeral three, and the three indicates that there's a number of three items, and we have a nu another numeral four, we have a numeral 5, a numeral 6, a numeral 7, a numeral 8, a numeral 9, and then we all know where the 0 belongs. That belongs up here. So that indicates, like over here, that there's no sticks. We have none. We have one for one stick and two for two sticks and so on. These aren't quite lined, but you get the idea. So we have these 10 different numerals. We have the, the numerals 1 through 9, and we have the 0, so we count those. There's 10, 10 of them there. Well, obviously, after we've done that, we run out. <clears throat> kind of like we've done over here, when we, we never run out. We just keep adding these things up. Over here, we run out of numerals. So what we do is when, once we've hit our ninth, we kind of start over again. And we use a, a numeral 1 and a numeral 0. And that's 10. That's 10 items that we're counting. We use two numerals for that. And then we, we have 11, and we have 12. And, you know, we can, we can go on and on. And then when we get to, to 99, we have, we've kind of run out of numerals again, so we go to 100. Okay, well, once we've, once we've gotten there, I mean, you get the idea. We're, we're counting, and we have these columns. And each of these columns has a, um, a, a unique um, number associated with it. For instance, we have, uh, we have a 10 to the 0 power, and then we have a 10 to the 1 power, and then here we have a 10 to the 2 power and so on. So for the number 100, we have a, a 1 and a 0 and a 0. Well, 10 to the 0 is 1. Uh, we have uh, 10 to the, to the 1 is 10, and 10 to the 2 is 100. So we have 1 100, we have no 10s, and we have no 1s. So let's say we have a, a number like uh, 348. Okay, so what that means is that we have three 100s, we have four 10s, and we have eight 1s. So that's 348. Uh, another number we might have would be 762. Well, seven 100s. This column, there's, there are hundreds. We have six tens, 60, and we have two ones. So seven hundreds plus uh, six tens plus two ones, 762. And that's pretty much how we count. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a, a different way of counting uh, the way computers count. So we've learned how to count in base 10 because probably we have 10 fingers and that's kind of an easy way for us to do it. But computers don't have 10 fingers, uh, they use transistors. And a transistor has two different states, it's either off or on. And computers will use uh, two different numbers to represent those states. Typically it's 0 is off and 1 is on, or you could have negative logic, it would be just the other way around. 0 would be on and 1 would be off, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So what we do when we count in binary, which is the way computer counts, the transistors are either on or off, and in this case we have a 1 here and we have a 0 here. 
and if we want to, that which represents one thing, well, then we we count up to the next one. We've we've run out of digits. We only have ones and zeros. So just like we count in decimal, we start over here, and we have a one and a zero, which represents two, and then we have a one one, which represents three, and then we have a one and a zero and a zero, and that represents four. And we do that the same way that we when we count with um, in in a decimal. We have a two to the zero, and then we have a 2 to the 1, and we have a 2 to the 2, and we have a 2 to the 3rd power, and we have a 2 to the 4th power, and I could go on with that. <clears throat> so for instance, let's say that we have a, a number here, and let's say that's a 0, 1, 1, and a 0, and a 1, okay? Well this is in binary, it's not decimal, it's not uh, 1101. Uh, usually we say it's 1101 binary or something like that. So 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 to the 2 is 4, 2 to the 3 is 8, and 2 to the 4 is 16. Just the same way when we're counting in decimal we had 10 to the 0 was ten, uh, 1, 10 to the 1 was 10, 10 to the 2 was 100, 10 to the 3 was 1000, so on. So we're just doing this in base 2. So let's say we have another number we have, let's call it a, a 1, 1, uh, 1, 1, 0, oh, okay? So we have a 2 to the 4, and we have a 2 to the 3, and we have a 2 to the 2, and we have a 2 to the 1, and we have no 2 to the zeros. So that's a 16 plus an 8 is 24, plus 4 is 28, plus 2 is 30. So that would be... 30 decimal or 11110 in binary. So basically this is the way that computers count and it gets kind of tedious after a while and we're going to take a look at that in the next video of different ways of organizing these bits and counting in a little bit different ways.